Fantastic. So we've been kind of, Rizal came up to me and put, put some cool posts about using a, but using this cool little thing called a um, um, common sense machine. I want to like chaos creation. <laughs> yeah. So this is like, this is kind of what it does. And I'm just going to show people like how it actually works. So you can, you know, you do it yourself. Basically, you kind of jump into it, make an account login, uh, which is super sweet, super easy. And then you can start playing around with things. Uh, so all you have to do is go to upload image and you create it and you upload an image. And you just change, upload it, and that's it. Like, it's as simple as that. Once you upload it, then it will go to a process called refining. Well, first it'll interpret image and then it go to process called refining. So it will initially look like a potato, like mm -hmm. that. Oh, that's actually quite potato-like as well, right? Um, mm -hmm. And then it will go through other iterations in order to see a bunch of stuff happening. In order to look something more like uh, like this. Oh, that's the guy you saw in that trailer that I've got. So it's like there's a, there's a feed with with modeling clay like past the scene. So you got like these kind of like weird textures kind of came throughout, and it's kind of like as simple as that. And you know you can feed stuff like AI like like this meta gremlin is an AI creation because Photoshop loves horrible things. And so is, so are these three. And sometimes you may want to feed them multiple times to get something which is usable. Um, and you can make like collage, like this Rattler is basically collage stuff, um, as well as this uh, Nocturna, kind of just took like a, a bodybuilder and stuck a bunch of stuff on him. So that's like a straight collage and I got like this to figure out. Or you can take photography. So I had some action figures lying around, just took photos of them and got like these kind of guys. So oh, you kind of get like weird things around the back. Like He-Man came out fairly well. Um, it's almost like it knows what it looks like. And it kind of stuck wow. this kind of weird thing in the back of him. Um, I got like Skeletor here, which kind of sounded like, we don't like skull people, but making into kind of this uh, Assyrian-like uh, warrior uh, with kind of like, Jesus, like his back is like a Bucky the wrestler of some kind, or demonic, right? And also kind of played around, what if we put something that's proper 2D as well? So did some vector illustrations, and I got like these guys, that's guy in the trailer. He's got a little protrusion at the top, which is quite amusing. Seems to like adding those in. And it's kind of like, you know, that's like a purely flat 2D thing popping in, and you get like a 3D thing. So you can literally just draw it with a pencil or color the pencils and put it in. You don't have to have like super skilled stuff, or say you can do a collage, you can, you can do like, Modeling clay, cut stuff out and put it in. You can take a bunch of sticks and stones and make something that's humanoid. For the person of VRM, you can do it for anything, And you can kind of get to all these. And I kind of talk about population, just to populate the metasphere with the background characters. It's like super simple. Just stick a character, a couple of change of colors. And I'm getting like loads of these background guys I can use in my work and other things. So that's. So, Augie, there's one thing that you told me right away that like getting something in the T pose is of primary importance if you're trying to have a simple path forward to rigging this thing. Exactly, it makes it better. For example, like with, with these guys, because it's not the T pose, they all have these weird claw hands. You know? <laughs> so they kind of look like like weird and monstrous and stuff like that. Whilst we have like this person here, like uh, the, the, the two cream, uh, she's got actually T pose. And they kind of work a bit better when it comes to rigging. Uh, this guy like didn't work as a T-pose. So it, it takes a lot more weight painting afterwards. It also does weird things such as like do like a ca like a cavity in his back and stuff like that. So the more T-pose you go, the better it is. Sometimes you can get away with it. Um, and sometimes you may want to do the whole thing again. One warning to people. I've got like a bunch of these I've been doing over over a week and a bit, but they generally because a lot of people are using this, so generally it may take a whole night uh, overnight to kind of like get one full refinition done. Um, they've also been improving stuff. So I think like uh, we go from version one to version 1.1 1 .1, and the refinements are much better as well, just in the last few days. They keep improving every couple of days. So it's worth kind of keeping an eye on um, how things are going, but just you can't put that many things on. So this is like over X amount of time. For example, this is like one character I put through like this Rattler guy and I got like different thing every time. So it's kind of like, it's quite different. It's kind of similar, but it's quite different. I need to rig this guy at some point. So that's how it kind of works to get the input in. So various inputs, they all work. And um, Rizzo has been playing around with, like, as you said, like mid-journey and stuff like that. I mean, it has these super cool characters um, that we're going to try and uh, 
basically rig, get into VRM, get into avatar formation, and further on. So having said that, let's jump into Blender. <laughs> Change windows quickly. Do, 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 do. Live. And here we are. And I'm just uh, just going to change this as well. So actually, I'm recording the Blender. Uh, this is apologies about these things. This is to ensure high quality recording. And cool. So we're I mean, in Blender. Already been fascinating, man. Just seeing how you're using the CSM tool versus how I've been, and and thinking about that has, has given me so many ideas. Uh, I'm I'm so stoked to figure out how to do. You, this you can do of anything. Stuff. Like you, you can take you can literally take a photo of a rock with a phone, and phones are great quality. I mean, all those who take my phone, and you know, you can just add things to it, and you can like do a collage into it and add things to it in various ways, and it all works. Um, yeah, yes, and you get like. It. Sorry, I was just gonna say, if you look at the showcase on the the website, they have some really great like two D like illustrations come out yeah. really cool too. They do, and you got like just put a light on. You got all these monsters. <laughs> Wait, You're all in the same place. Are those those are creations you made in CSM AI? Yeah. Wow. Wow. So we yeah, can get like great. There's some really nice textures, man. Holy cow. Right. So that's what I mean. You can start playing around with like real world textures and everything else. Uh, they, they add more to it. Um, like I was surprised that with, with the claymination uh, that actually came through. So where is the bur -bur 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 Crable? Yeah. So like this dude was made with clay, like modeling clay, like, you know, for claymination. And they kind of got these pastel -y things in the end out of it. Uh, same thing mm -hmm. like with these action figures. Uh, that's probably the best one, but the He-Man or the Barba Bread, obviously, if everyone knows the story about Wonder Bread, He-Man, you know where it's coming from, or uh, Skeldor. <laughs> it's not quite a Keldor, but, uh, you know, you're getting these kind of cool textures, but it knows almost these musculatures. So it must have had these kind of feedings of action towards at some point in its algo, right? Because um, they all have the same musculature at the back, and there's no yeah. way you can like, recognize those. So it's interesting this kind of doing these kind of same things because of input. Um, so yeah, yeah, you're kind of like trying to find it. So we've got this little dude. Hey. Woo. Cool. So basically, that's coming in with a texture and everything. Uh, so we're gonna gonna try and like do one or two today um, and see how we get on. And yeah, so Maybe. let's turn off the colorization and we got all this. So this is just imported as a G GLB file. Oh, by the way, they come with these GLB files. Now they have like uh, UCS and they've got like OBJs. But GLBs are really nice to work with. So we're going to keep with that. And we're going to yeah, transport it back from, into FBM. Yeah, this is straight from CSM. So I just yeah. basically took mid-journey image, removed the background, plopped it in CSM, let it render, downloaded GLB, and brought it into Blender and tinkered around with it in like a whole bunch of different ways, but couldn't couldn't get it right. So yes, I'm fascinated to see this. So we got these things in and it's all good. Right, so right now, um, it's not a huge amount we can do with these things. I mean, we can, uh, if if we want to get super finickety, got this little dude, we can start uh, to go into a wireframe and we could like start tidying up the geo. But tidying up the geo is literally go to edit mode, pick vertex and move them around, you know. So there's not, you don't want to delete any of them because like you're going to upset the UVs. So there's not a huge amount of stuff you can do quickly. So it's all kind of, you know, the mess yeah. around with the geo and stuff like that. It's, uh, all right. it's but, okay to have some like monstrous fingers. It's like, you know, it's its own yeah, thing. Yeah, it's fine. Like it's, they, they are crazy creatures. So it's going to work. <laughs> um, so cool. So let me just. Hey, Augie, let me mode. ask you, how's the uh -huh. polygon count by default in relationship to well, you can see the triangle the VRM? Here. Oh, right. We got 11.750. Okay, that's not too bad. Oh, let me just do this, actually. Uh, so this is going to be useful as well. So I'm just going to increase my thing to 1.33. So you actually see stuff. <laughs> and by the way, um, if you don't have a GLB importer in Blender, if you just go to your add-ons and type in GLB or GLTF, yeah, you GLTF, you'll have import export GLTF format. Make sure it's enabled. It's very important. Otherwise, none of this is going to work. Um, but yeah, it should come automatically enabled. 
but just in case uh, you've been messing around with stuff and decided to like take something off. Cool. So that's that. Um, so the, the card is good. It's eleven seven five zero. That's you know the half of those polys. Like we're good. We've got twenty twenty thousand triangles max um, before 000. we start getting lag. Yeah. I mean, Definitely. you can have VRMs which are like, which are like much bigger than that. I've, I've made VRMs which are like in, uh, in hundreds of thousands, but you know, you can have one or two of them in the space, and that's about it. If you add like more than that, things start to crawl and crash. So it's you know, it, it's about uh, optimizing the operability for everyone else and yep. being uh, a good uh, metaverse neighbor, basically. Gotcha, cool. gotcha. So we got this little guy, and we're gonna take him and we're gonna stick him straight to Mixamo. So we need to export him. Just gonna click that, selected him, go to export, and we want to export him as a FBX rather than a GLB. Ooh, so did right. you go into Blender? Sorry, I was just yes, asking, yes. so did you go into Blender just to preserve the texture on the model? Because I know that by default it won't preserve it if you just go straight to Mixamo. There, yeah. There's a few ways. So yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll let you know in a second. Oh, um, it, 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 this is where I kept getting stuck. I'm like, I got it. I, I got the file converted. I got it up into Mixamo. I got, I, I didn't do this one specifically in Mixamo, but like got a few cool. working in there, but I'm like, ah, I can't get the colors to stick. Right. Right. So how are we going to name these? Uh, quick naming convention. Uh, anyone want to contribute a name? By the way, over here, I like to take everything off apart from mesh. Just in case you've got cameras, you select other stuff and stuff like that. Selected objects, mesh, make it nice and clean. Take off bake animation, just in case you've got any NLAs and stuff like that in. It's going to preserve time. So sometimes I forget that I've got animations all the time. I'm going to play around with stuff. Um, I'm just going to call them grams two. We, we can always, always change that, just so we've got like some kind yeah. of convention. Um, I think that's character number two, right? And going to go to export FBX, and that's exported. So now we're going to jump in to Mixamo. And let me just change stuff. Share screen, change windows. Boom, go live. Rook. I'm so excited that I understand everything that you're doing up until Mixamo. this point. So I'm like, all right, I'm in good shape. Let's do it. Awesome. Select character files and see where I stuck that in. It'll be in VR Power Special. No, nope. where did I save it? This uh, is my my daily struggle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Far far too many far too many files. Pretty sure I. Oh yeah, cool. Got it. Uh, the AI VRM is. Uh, yeah, I've been working too much across, so I need to go to AI VRM and the result, grams two, open, and I should just import it straight off. It's very low poly, so. No. Oh. Oh no. Technology inherently doesn't like me, so it's, you know, there's that. Okay. So I didn't think this will happen. Uh, let me just try again. And I was wondering if the arms on that one would like goof up Mixamo. Yeah, there... we've got oh. workarounds for that as well. Cool. So right, we've got problems with it, uh, which is cool. This is part of it. Um, let me just jump back to Blender. Uh, let me just. Uh... I think the uh, I, the other I think the other two's arms are straighter out. I don't know if that'll make it happier. Possibly, but I just want to. It shouldn't be the straight arms. It should be the size of the arm. It's quite unusual. Also, that'll work. Let me just have a peek. Um, yeah, I also have no idea what I'm talking about. So you know, disregard that. Yeah, I'm not pretty sure. Like the arms are all connected and stuff like that. Uh, let me do a little. Sure you cheat. don't have an object in there that doesn't belong in there. Maybe you, you got to uncheck some. I mean, I know it can handle importing a camera and all that, but maybe there's an yeah. extra object somewhere. Yeah, there's there's a world that kind of comes with it, and there's a mesh object as well. What is this here? 
Maybe something came in here with it. Mm -hmm. Fine detail of finding what the hell that is. I thought it's just the world thing over here. Um, it's not being affected by it. Because if I, is it, I can't see any breaks in a mesh. Usually that will be the case, but mesh seems solid. Huh. Let me just uh, reimport that, just in case something happens. Otherwise, it would be a very short workshop. Did it work? Yeah. <laughs> and did the, the GLTF result. That's number two, if I remember. Oh, no, that's number two. Let's try this guy while we're here. Cool. So usually I kind of grab it and put it up there. So we got like the same thing. And it's quite useful to kind of just check that the conversations are there. Awesome. So cute. <laughs> like in a weird way. I don't know what it is. It's got a um, thong on, which was like totally. It's got a thong, like a bikini top, two heads. Mm. It's it's got like side or eye or two. And like crocs. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's so bizarre. Yeah. Like it's, <laughs> but the fingers are really nicely spread out. That's that's the other thing about it. So let me just move these. I can move them later. Um I just want to get the get it moving. Uh so let's get that. Go here. Export is FBX. And I messed up your naming collection. That's what should be two getter ones than one. So this will be Graham's Graham's three. He's got like uh weird things on his head. Mm -hmm. Cool. Got chosen, selected objects, mesh only. Yeah, we're all good. Nothing else is weird. Oh, actually, how I remember how I got this one. I was messing around with the prompts, and I, I kept trying to explain to the AI. I was like, I want both arms sticking straight out to the side, and it kept adding extra arms to all of the ones that, oh, wow. <laughs> that it was spitting out. Uh, and so I, I think that's what happened with this one's head. But it's kind of cool, and it sort of looks like pigtails. That's just pretty cool. I've just checked it in a in a in a GLB viewer separate. You guys can see. Just to make sure that it's exported normally. It has not GLB viewer. Sorry, FBX viewer. Mm -hmm. um, so that sh this should be work. So let's let's go. Let's go back. Right. Let's just try that. Maybe something's weird. Maybe it's a different version of Blender. I've got. Um, so we're straight new file here. Delete. Let me just make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. Otherwise, you're just staring at one screen. <laughs> you're staring at two maximum screens otherwise. And it's an interesting share window. Uh, da -da -da -da. So I've just opened a, a brand new file. Cool, I'm gonna hide that. Just quickly import. Let's go for the speed running to the two. And it's there, the number two. So hands right. Sweet. Zoom in. And adjust the size. Shaboom. So looking good. And let me just get that. Export is FBX. And uh, do two, two, go. Just in case that file is it's some weirdness, I'm going to have three point one it. Take on the take animation, select the objects. They'll do. Port. Going to create so here. That's recording. Happy days. So let me, the moment of truth, let me change to share screen, change windows to make some more. Eventually, boom, boom. 
change recording to Mixamo. There we go. So that should. Oh. It is different size, you know? So there was something in. Oh no, the other one had like all these other meshes. So go this way. And. Come on. Hasn't crashed, which is good. Hey. Huh, there must be, I must have had like a different version of Blender or something like that. Um, I can't imagine anything else that could be weird, right? Um, yeah, yeah, no, it, it, it must be, <laughs> this must be the Blender thing. Like there's nothing else that can be with it. Um, no, dude, honestly, this kind of stuff happens to me all the time. So sometimes it's like cool. nice to know that it's not always something I'm doing wrong. It could be something that is just goofy. So, all right, this is dope, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Well, like so sometimes I, the new versions of Blender, um, I did do this on my other rig initially. So maybe that's why. Uh, right, okay. So when I'm rigging like these oddities, I start with symmetry and then I undo the symmetry because it's just a little bit quicker and more precise. Um, so we have got that. Knees are going to the knees. Groin is going to the groin. Cool, that's so good. It's going to take our symmetry now, and we can start adjusting it a little bit more. I mean, just to kind of, we're going to be doing some in painting, in painting, uh, so weight painting, because everyone knows good things come to those who wait, paint, mm -hmm. just like Guinness. And we're just going to kind of just get these there. So we're just going to, cool, excellent. Next. And hopefully this will pick up a pick up boom do it fairly quickly and we'll be winning. Yeah, I think because I did this on my other rig and I transferred the file. Um, so I must have just had like a newer version of Blender. Because I know like the, the newest newest version of Blender changes all your um all your materials, uh, all your mixed shades and nodes don't work anymore and stuff like that. I'm yeah, sure wonderful. I didn't use that one. I'm sure he's the same one, but maybe I didn't. Like he, I'll make sure I've, I got, <laughs> I've got like 15 versions, so <laughs> like it's yeah, that's cool. Sweet, that works. Awesome. Happy days. Uh, nice, by the way, dude. Yeah, yeah. But that thing of like adding those meshes on top of it, when you have any gaps in the joints, that, that works. So if you have like a gap in a joint here or there, mm. you can just add like those things and that, that will kind of work. Um, as long as you don't have like problems in the corrupt files in Blender. Uh, cool. Anyways, next. Yeah, all good. So before I want to add any motion, it's all good. We don't worry about that. We're going to get it done. See, going to straight download, T-Pose, tweet as. From prepping download, downloading asset, and that asset has been downloaded. So I think that's went straight to my download files. I'm just going to double check. Going to just try to keep everything nice and neat. Bada boom. And I can uh, I can uncheck. Uh, you guys will see, but when I downloaded this stuff initially, I, I opened up uh, exit. I opened up like my main browser and found it. Opened up. <laughs> cool. So we got here that's been downloaded uh, 981. That seems about right with the rig. I'll just copy that. Replace the file. Straight in, and we're going back to Blender. I'm just gonna change screens here, change windows, back to blah 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 blah, blah Blender. Make sure I'm recording Blender. Uh, recording Blender, cool. I am happy days. We're here. We're gonna keep this little dude here because he's got the skin, skin in the game, and I'm gonna import. The newly rooted FBX, which should be in here. Uh, 1851 is the time. This seems about right. Times work. Sweet. So that's one. So you talk about like how to get uh, your materials transferred. Yes. This is there's, there's two as things. Far as I got. The first thing is to transfer the materials for the Blender. The next thing is to transfer the Blender materials for Unity. So first, going to do this. So I'm going to select. The new skin, the snowman. I'm gonna select the old skin. Control L. 
link materials, done. Whoa. That's it. Because I'm the sorry, Ozzy, can, you can you show me that one more time? Yeah, yeah, no worries. So because the mesh hasn't changed. So this is the important thing. If you start messing with the mesh, this wouldn't work. You'll get like a crazy stuff for everything you Wait, use. did you, mesh did hasn't you changed. import the file from Mixamo and the GLB yeah. here? Yeah, yeah. So the colored okay. one, the one with colors, the one with yep. the skin, that's an old GLB file. This with the rig, like that's yep. our, that's our basically mesh. So I'm selecting the mesh, the new one, the snow mesh, as they call it. Selecting the old one by control, uh, not control, but by just double selecting by um, shift uh, left hand click. Control L, link materials. Bam. Nice. Enter. That's a quick way. You can actually go to shading and do the same thing as well. So you can go to the shading menu and this material zero, and you can just basically. If I undo this, you can go here and just change that to material zero and get the same thing. But shortcut is where it's at, right? Yes. Cool. So we can take this dude, turn him off. We have everything here. That's the GLB you turned off. Yeah. yeah. So this GLB. is the yeah. this is our main little filey stuff that's gonna do joys. Looks like something weird in the oh that's oh, setting pose in the world. Should all work? Yeah, cool. So, second thing about these UVs, which we'll need, is we need to go to UV editing. And it's selected everything. It's only one mesh, so you don't have to worry about that part. And this is the scheme we need to export. So, you need to save this basically, just so you can see that as a skin. It looks like the skin. You always double check. Go to image, save as. I'm going to save you the same file so everything is nice in place. And what's called the Brems. Oop, I can't spell. Brems. Is it three? Three, isn't it? Three. Skin. And because it's huge being a PNG and being 2K, we want to make really sure we change this to JPEG. Otherwise, you, you suddenly get up with a VRM of like five gig, five meg. And you're like, why is it so big? Like, so this will decrease, even though it's two, like our mesh is super small. So for okay. purposes of this, it'll work and just save that. So we got that in there, right? And then we're going to jump back in here. Wait, wait, I'm, and... I'm sorry, go back one second. Uh, so you, this was a PNG and you just resaved it as a JPEG? Mind this wasn't saved at all. This came with a oh, GLB. Okay. So it came packed in a GLB, which is why your GLB is like uh, four megabytes or so, got it. you know? So that was packed in. You can pack stuff within it. Um, okay. You can pack a bunch of materials, not only one, which is yeah, fun stuff. Animations and all kinds of stuff. Is a JPEG. So you, you go to UV editor, make sure you select it. Yep. Go to UV editor, and that's that's that kind of thing. And just go up here to image, to your left hand side, yep. and just save as. Okay, beautiful. So making sure you save it in the right folder because we'll need this for Unity. Okay. Like right now, you can do everything in Blender and have Blender animation with these guys. It's fantastic. But we want to get it to the Unity. We're going to get it to the VRM. So that's why we're doing that. So could you export? So Blender has a VRM exporter. If you were to export it as a VRM now, it, it wouldn't. It, it Blender it wouldn't does have a VRM exporter, but my experience, it's really janky. Okay. Um, like the Unity one is just smooth. It just works really nicely. The Blender yeah, one it. is, yeah, lots of trial and error. I think like I spent the... Uh, like seven hours trying to get the same thing that I got like in half an hour in Unity. Oh, like, shit. Oh. Um, but if you're doing facial stuff, it probably is better for it. But, you know, we're not doing super highly complex VRMs because no. having that many bones is equivalent of having a really complex VRM. Yes. So that's more like for Vroids, i.e. like streamer um, identities where you're kind of looking at stuff like that. You know, like all those um, eager anime checks that I do. Um, cool. So we got this and we got that. Let's turn off the skin, so it's not distracting. And now we're going to do some uh, weight painting and make sure it works. So when I weight paint, I usually like to go to this um, little thing up there. Basically, it means I've got to see through, so I see where everything's at. So first thing first, before we do that, let's adjust our, our bones. 
they are pretty good, but not quite. So I press uh, tab, which is go to my edit mode. So I'm gonna select some bones. I'm just gonna get a bit more centralized. Pep, pep, pep. Just these ones here. Pep, pep, pep. And let's get them a little bit more moved to the center. There we go. I'm gonna take this little elbow a little bit up. That's where the joint's gonna be. This one can go a little bit down. Stats can stay maybe just a little bit. So like, the thing is, like, I'm not gonna mess around with fingers because I can get stuck there for a while. <laughs> um, just kind of getting the, the main basic thing, getting the hips in. That bone can go a little bit left. It's a main bone. It's nice here because you have like, all these lines so you can kind of adjust yourself to it. I press three, I go to the side view. Like a lot of times I like to change my, this one to be more rotated in line with the head. Even though it does not gonna affect much stuff, it's gonna affect your bend a bit more. So you gotta get more of a kind of verisimilitude, like more believability with a character. Uh, you can ideally have time, you can do the whole kind of back stuff, but you know, we're just gonna do the mage stuff so we can get it working. Cool, awesome. So one thing I'd like to do is I wanna add some, some bones for those hands while we're here. Why not? Um, while we're in edit mode, so I'm gonna click on a bone that I wanna protrude from. This is a really dirty quick way of doing it. Shift D, go to another bone, connected to that bone. <laughs> Cause I want it to connect to the neck. I want it to be connected to the rotation of it. So I'm gonna adjust that in, rotate that down. And maybe shrink it a little bit. Cool. Cool. And it's going to do the same on the other side. Um, so there's, there's a way of doing this uh, by adding um, specific bone mirroring and specific way of like writing stuff in. But for the points of simplicity, I'll leave it for another day. Uh, it's actually a lot quicker. Um, but visually, it, it just looks like godly gook. <laughs> so you'd be like, what's he doing now? Like, I'm just, just writing mm -hmm. shit in. Because um, they're not quite the same, so we always need to adjust them um, here. Cool. So we got, we got these two bones, and they're coming on from the head. We need to remember that, right? Cool. Everything else is solid. And now we're going to export this as a rigged FBX. So select the bone. Oh no, before that, it's going to do the weight painting. I think we're good for weighting more or less, but we're going to do it a little bit. Cool, awesome. So we're in a weight paint mode. And we weight paint mode, I select stuff. And I didn't select something. Cool. How'd you go into weight paint mode? All right, cool. So I select the rig, then I select the object that I want to weight paint on. I go up here where the object mode is, and it's going to pop up as a weight paint mode. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then if I select this, just like that, you can see there's weight painting. And yeah. make sure I select this as well so it opens it up. Sometimes it does it correctly, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but yes, yeah, so you can see where the bones are. So that's affected more or less, but I don't want the head to be bending like that at all. I want it to be fairly down there. So let's just give it a chin, basically, you know, so it's not like a balloon. A big balloon is quite cool in a way. Just gonna get Can it you there. clarify what exactly the weight painting is doing? Yes. The weight painting is giving weight to each thing. So um, each bone has a certain amount of bendabil bendability and influence upon each mesh. That's what weight painting does. So here I started a head bone, and red means it's affected 100%. So if I check it out, it's affected everything 100%. We see what it's actually doing. And if I was to kind of like take the weight off and just do that, for example, like take off the influence, you can see that it's not affecting those parts anymore. Perfect oh, example. So that's Thank what weight painting does. You're trying to basically get it to affect stuff that you want it to be affected. Um, so is red, it fair to say you're kind of 
you're restricting and allowing movement, basically. Yeah, yeah. But basically, you're you're enabling uh, bone structure movement underneath the mesh, so it's kind of moving it, or underneath the skin, if you want to think about it in that way more, um, which kind of works in that way. So red will basically give you 100% of, of the ability. So it's like, you know, like if you're doing any kind of like um, robotic stuff, it'll all be red more or less, because, you know, it's going to affect everything. Mm -hmm. And and the other stuff is going to be less than that. So all this kind of green stuff, it means it's more rubbery. So you could have like a character which is all rubbery and stuff like that as well. So it's just, I mean, bone, like this kind of stuff is can be fairly tedious, but this one's fairly simple. So I like to kind of just paint that head in. I'm going to add a little bit of blurring just to kind of like smooth that stuff at the bottom. So it's still got a little bit of kind of bubbly headness. And here you can give a lot, a lot of character to the character, as you kind of say. Yeah, well, and I'm pretty special. sure the other parts are, yeah, that they're fine. So you can kind of, when you check on the bone, you control click on the bone, and then you can press rotate, and you can see how it's affecting stuff. So you can get like down a rabbit hole with bone, with like weight painting and spend inordinate amount of time on it. Okay. No like a lot of times you'll have problems you'll have are around here and around the hips. But that's just like standard kind of stuff where you get like these weird things happening. And mm -hmm. I'm gonna post a little tutorial how to fix this. Um, it's fairly quick, but it takes a couple hours. So can you to... essentially paint, like if you had, like let's say you had a tube popping out the head that you wanted to be kind of floppy or whatever. Can We're you doing that right now. That? Oh, yeah, cool. yeah. So those bones that we added in, they're not affected by anything. Pink means nothing's happening. So we want them to be affected. So we want these things to be affected by this bone here. So now I'm going to take that. I'm going to take 100% because I want the ends to be 100. And I'm just going to paint that. You can see how the color has changed, right? Which means that's that's being affected. So I'm going to just get that get that hand in, like just those fingers in there. I like to go press just like nine to go literally the other side, just like a nice quick thing of doing it. It kind of covers a lot of stuff. So then you'll need to go to like a mirror seven top. Yeah, so it covers almost everything really quickly. So for example, now if I move this bone around, you can see it's affecting everything there. It's affecting the bottom parts. So I want those parts to be more rubbery. So I'm going to put, I don't know, like a 74. Um, it kind of just develop a feel for it and a lot of like trial and error because every character is different you know that's that's the thing there's no kind of like this is the way to do everything um it's kind of these are the, the rough rules and then each thing is gonna give you a different result effectively so i'm just gonna like add that in and then i want the rest of it to be on a fairly floppy fairly rubbery right um so let's go all the way down to three three and which is like this kind of like nice greeny color and there we go. That's on that side, and that's on the other side. So it's like you can, you can you can spend a lot of time getting everything super precise, and sometimes you want to do that, but it's just about like knowing what you're trying to achieve with it. And the nice thing is you can kind of like huh. it's kind of working. Maybe I want to I want more hardness on that hand. So let me go to 0.85 on the mm -hmm. hand itself. So. So I'm getting like hard hand, super hard fingers. This is actually gonna be really floppy, but I'm getting the weeds now. <laughs> um, yeah, I think there's more antennas, but maybe it's made it flop here. Let's do it. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Let me go for point three three. These tips on. Hopefully, they'll give us a little bit of flop. Very mind I'm going to get us one as well, so I don't want to get it too complex. And then just blur these things in. Got a bunch of tools in your left hand side. You can kind of blur, finger rub, blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah, weight painting is one of the most tedious things in CG. That's so cool, though. And it takes a long time to make it work. I'm not going to make it red because I'm going to spend yonks trying to get it to work without it. 
as long as you try stuff and yeah any idea why i've actually so i've been following along a little bit with one of my csm creations and i got my texture and all that on there but oddly when i i you know i think maybe it's because i'm in the wrong mode when i went into weight painting and i started uh -huh. painting it actually moved and manipulated my mesh yeah, we'll do that if you're if your bone's in a different place. So if your bone is like let's say here, mm -hmm. and that's being affected by it, you know, um, because I want it to be like floppy, maybe less floppy than that, that's too floppy. Then if I do that again, see if I do this, see how that's being affected? Right. That's what I'm getting. Yeah, that's it. So basically the amount of pull. So sometimes you want to set up a bunch of frames for really precise weight painting and they'll all like have a um, what i like to do like import like an animation that gets the character moving so you'll see which parts are moving around you can like in paint like that a lot easier uh also like importing multiple meshes rather than one so splitting your character into like six eight 25 40 different pieces means weight painting is a lot easier um i, I kind of do that for my method drumway I split them up in a in a bunch of places just so that weight painting is is a lot more solid. So I'm gonna just add a little bit more green here and a little bit more green there. Because I mean these are gonna be just like basically flopping around um rather than doing anything more than that. So kind of it's good enough, right? So let's duplicate that on the other side. But yeah, it's, it's like you know, when you get characters like tentacles with a bunch of different stuff. You can see how you can properly end up in the weeds. So make sure control, click, choose the other one, and then start affecting it. Wait, so what what can I do to, because it seems like no matter where I paint on my object, it just completely destroys my mesh. Is it, how can I I mean, it doesn't destroy that? a mesh. It just affects the, it just the bone affects it in a different way. Your mesh is still there and solid. You know, if you were to move all the bones, it'll go back to, it'll revert back to normal. Um, so I'll show you in a second. Um, so this is like a, a different way of doing it. I'm painting everything first, so everything's affected, and I'm going to like disaffect it. You know, so it's like a reverse, like negative painting, right? So everything's going to be affected by it, like, like it's a hard surface. Right. And then I'm going to go back to it, because I kind of know what I'm doing, where I want it to go, so I can, can do that now in that way. Because sometimes you're trying to find out on a character, because each character is so different, right? And go, uh, what is it? Uh, seven four, wasn't it? And the other one, getting it there. Make sure it's yes. ish. Ish is sometimes good enough. Do -do -do -do. And then it was 85 on the hand. Oh, interesting. I just realized you can press Alt. And as you draw, it's just, it's interesting. It kind of does. Yeah, like yeah. A, this where is shortcut gradient. Yes. Yeah, the gradient is a really good tool if you have something straight. Um, these are all the things. That's the gradient right here. Um, probably should do like a, a full session on just weight painting because <laughs> it's something that I always have problems with, and not problems with, but you know, it's something that's kind of everyone gets stuck with it. All the time. You know, that that would be great because actually, I'm I'm having absolutely horrible failure. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, for sure. Cool. So let me just check this. So you can see how that's kind of pulling it off. That means I've got some meshes there. Sometimes with dirty mesh, you'll get this as well. You know. So that we need to fix those because that's not going to look great. So let me just make sure that's going to sort it out. That part here. So that you can easily do stuff from an angle. Let me just blend stuff in. And there's various ways you can kind of sort it out. Like with this kind of mesh, it's I've got just I have to be good at this. I can just find it. See the mesh is all like that, so that's there. So I can press uh. M. And now I'm in a planar mode. And now when I press control, I choose each individual plane. So this is useful when you have like really low poly planes. Here, you can imagine like 
<laughs> you can spend quite a lot of time with doing this. But we just got this little problem here. So let's just get those sorted out and read. So that wait, 100%. And sometimes wait painting doesn't work normally. So it's all pull out, pull in, go for a distance. It's, you know, this is what AI people need to work on, wait painting. <laughs> this, is a, this is crucial stuff. I believe like surely computer can do this better than a human being. There's intent, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, probably someone is. Cool. So that's that. And you just press M to get out of it. Incidentally, if you need to work on vertexes, you can press V and you get all the vertex points. So you can choose a vertex and around it, but I guess you more finicky, especially with like things that aren't super, super, super low poly. I can get proper weeds. So let me just look at that. You know, now I can see, considering your characters have so, you know, all those excellent avatar or characters, I should say, you've been making in avatars, they have such a, so much fluidity and yeah. floppity stuff going on on some of their parts, which are so great. Now I can see how you were, you know, you're stressing weight painting, but now I can see that you actually seem to spend a lot of time on that part. Yeah, yeah. Well, I have to, and, and I think I have to combine together, because like, uh, like, for example, Zoyon from Metadromoy, he's got like 68 different parts that are all weight painting differently. And if you did him as one mesh, it couldn't work. Right. Um, so, yeah, sorry, it was a lot of I jumped in. <laughs> that was good. Uh, Augie, you we think go. we could like uh, get this thing moving in like 15 minutes or so? Or what? Yeah. Uh... This is it. We got it. We painted, done. Bam, Beautiful. bam, select the rig. Select the mesh, export FBX. Like I've been just naming these as 2X, just so I've got some kind of a series formation in my head. Selected objects, that's fine. Uh, then select anything else I will now. So we just go for speed and that should export the FBX as it is. Done. Now, we're going to jump to Unity. So, bada 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 bam. let me change the recording to Unity. Unity, and let me change your view so you can see. So I think I have to go for like full screen for Unity, otherwise you get weird things. Um, so, I put screen. Screen one, go live. You gotta see yourself. And then if I go to Unity, can you see that? Yeah. You can you see Unity? Excellent. Is is it tripping or is it fine? No, it's fine. Cool, awesome. Because this is Unity and the Discord don't agree. You know, why should we have an easy life? So I'm gonna. Everything is in here, and I've got like files open here. So this is our file I'm gonna just drop that in straight and we've got the skin naming convention helps it's the same one um how do you like your skin I'm gonna just uh control d this one I'm gonna call that grams for the speed cool so i'm gonna take you the skin select a new material stick it into albedo bam we got it let me just uh Far too many. I've made a few. <laughs> right, move this guy dude back. F zoom in. Go to ISO view. It is much better. Take our well grams over here on the left hand side from generic to humanoid. Apply. That's applied. Make sure our rig is in there. You can see the rigs there. Go back in, armature even. Smash down. How big do you want him? Uh, maybe like three quarters size of like regular humanoid. Like uh, regular humanoid, this is like two block, two meters. Is that like standard size? Uh, you kind of, that's, that's the max size. So, okay. let's just. Uh, it can be small. Go, I like I like it being small. That's too big. Yeah, it's too big. Uh, let's go to one point 
one, yeah, yeah, yeah. Point four three. Is that right? Four three, because it's just off the right answer, right? It's all mm -hmm. Cool. So we need to take the skin on and stick it on him. So here I've got like some metallics and some smoothness. Um, you just drag and drop that, or how do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the skin okay. we saved earlier. So we got a new material in there. We took the skin that we saved, and we yep. just dragged it to our albedo here, and then we got it. So if we were to drag something else here, you'll see that. Right. Okay. So that's that's why we saved the skin earlier, and right. this is our material, just the base material. And then here we can play around with metallic smoothness and whatnot. Um, uh, so I'm just going to uh, decrease the metallics because it's not really metal, but it's kind of metaverse. So I'm going to put it out to 43 in line with the height and keep this smooth around 66 to give yeah, us a little bit of specular so cool. kind of highlights. And we're so almost is that there. Is in there just for measurement? Does that serve Yeah, yeah, yeah. Purpose? Just so I have visual measurement. Okay. It's just easier that way rather than like, you know, have measure against characters, measure against like rulers and stuff like that. Or, like, just, I find it's a lot easier. It's just just for my own purposes. So yeah, yeah. we say, take that, we select it, we go to VRM, export to VRM, job was included, ignore that. That means we have uh, those extra bones. So rams three, two, X, Resolve. Cool. And go to export. For this, it's just fine like that. Grand Zero. That's just exported, but that doesn't, doesn't do anything for our spring bones. So we need to go to VRM, then import the VRM we just exported. Find that, import it, save our prefab as a prefab in the files of. Okay, wait, wait, wait. okay, so the, the first thing that you imported was just the GLB? I imported, not the GLB, I imported the FPX from Blender. Oh, the FPX, okay. So now, it's here, now you're if you look at it, the your... armature, mesh object, and it comes yep. with a material and stuff like that. Uh, then, it. in order to give us material that stuff will read, because sometimes it, it, it doesn't read the material it imports with, you know what I mean? So it has like a different material for Unity. So we create a yep. new material, and then stick it on that to kind of have that yep. repetition. And then we export it as VRM and then re-import it back as a VRM. Oh, got now, it. the reason why we do that, we go to prefabs, find the grams. There we go. Um, you can see that it's an open prefab. You can see that it's a VRM. It's not an FBX anymore. We can move this little dude to the side. I'm not gonna leave him. And I'm gonna stick him there. And you can see is right same size and everything else. But also you can see like it's got it's got a bunch of other stuff in there already. So here we're just gonna like, get those spring bones affected. And they were in a head. So we've got to armature on my left hand side, make some more rig hips. And we're going to spine, because it's a head, spine, spine, neck. Cool. And then here we go. Head one, head two. Those are our little things, right? If we remember. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Those are those little kind of hands. Yeah. So if I go to secondary, which is a thing right at the bottom, that means like all the other nonsense that's sort of added to it, we have an option of root bones. So we have one bone on each side. We're going to add two. And we're going to take head one and just drag it into one. Head two. Uh -huh. Drag it into two. And you can see these little lines appeared here. And it tells us we're on the right side, we're on the right track. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that those are the root bones that have been affected. Fantastic. And we may have some gravity power to it. I don't know. It's not too much. 0.25. He, he's, a, he's a sturdy fellow. He can hold him up. Drag force is how much you're going to sway when you run around. So let's just give it like 0.55. So they're just like nice and happy medium. And stiffness, keep it at uh, 1.25, because they're fairly floppy, so just adding a little bit more of that. So you've got to play between those weight paintings and here, that's the relationship with the weight, the weight bones. Yep. That kind of comes together. Cool. So that's one thing. Another thing is we want to put a collider so it doesn't go through its head. So we know where our neck is here. We can put a collider in there. 
add component VR and Spring Boot Collider. And we can see if we go to side view, we've got this little thing. Now we can't move it in here. We've got to move it to our right hand side here. So first of all, I want it to be the size of its head, basically. I'm going to increase it. And then I'm going to move it up. Burr, 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 burr. So press L to get more control. And that's maybe so close. I wanted to 169, but it's going to be 172, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was maybe even 174. Right. Even bigger. No, 174 is right. 184. 179. Okay, 179. Almost 10 out, but yeah. So it's not going to collide together. So now the other thing is we know that it's in the neck. That's where our collider is. We go to the secondary the collider groups. We have no colliders. We need to add a collider, take the neck, drag it in. Mm. So we have a collider. So now we want to just quickly test this out before we export the VRM. So to test it out, we are going to play a game. So just go to here and press play right at the top of the screen in the middle of it, a small button for play. Play that. And that's going to basically initiate everything and play it. Application reload, too many things happening. <laughs> ba, 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 ba. It's playing. We you change the camera, no, it's playing. You go back to the scene. So now I'm in a game mode. We go this to select the whole object. You can see like the face over here. If you move it around, you can see that those spring bones are doing their stuff. And it's mm. not going through its head. You can see like how it's working, right? Like awesome. So that's super cool. So we've got this little dude. Let's get him into the metaverse. Awesome. So we got that. Select that. I'm happy with that. Take, turn off the play. <laughs> Otherwise, nothing's going to happen. Select our Grams 3, 2x, VRM, export to VRM. It's all good. And so so based on my like layman's understanding and, and messing around with the uh, VRM export and blender, it seems like unity just offers you like a billion more options for customization and to make it look right and flow right and everything. Yeah. 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 hundred uh, percent. So I like I mean, to just export over it just so it's uh, nice and easy. Uh, Cause you know, we're just updating it basically to the spring bones to export over that in meta denizens. Replace it. Any, yes. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. Do you have any advice on? I'm getting a um, in Unity. I'm getting like a no animator error when I try to use to export it as a VRM. I never uh -huh. ran into that before. Um, huh. You know how do I how do I avoid that or what did I miss along the way? All I did was import the model. I mean, I, it seemed pretty basic. I don't know where the did you change it to the lost. humanoid form at the start. Hmm. I don't know. Let me check that. That's, um, that's, I'll, that's I'll that. usually like I forget about your speed. I'm like, oh god. <laughs> yeah, I just I just need some direction. I don't want to take up your time. I'll look into that. Thank you. Oh no worries. Like uh, I've got like one of the the Springbone tutorial that I've got. I dream of Springbones. Uh, the the long thing. Uh, yeah, that's really good. It goes over this in all detail as opposed to just speed running it. So I think that's episode number four of uh, VRM Power Sessions. Um, specifically the last 30 minutes. Um, so yeah, if you just click on that and follow that through, you'll hopefully find, because I make a, I make a couple of mistakes that I've correct. So it's a good way of like looking at it. Um, so let me just change back to our GLB window file of, we're going to basically upload this guy quickly. Sweet as, you, you can see that, right? Let me just change my recording as well. Yeah, you're just basically creating a link for Mona now, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So I'm just going to... Come on. Oh, my God. This is so exciting. Sorry, I'm trying to get... Uh, there we go. Trying to get, like, uh, OBS to play along. <laughs> so it's like, I don't no, like amazing to change that you've things. Had I'm amazed that you're like functioning uh, with so many things open concurrently and like actually have a pretty streamlined process here, man. It's very impressive. You say streamlined. <laughs> <laughs>
this is streamlined, man, for for what we do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, like it, it's obviously when I'm not recording stuff, it's so much easier because each time I'm recording, I have to like change the share screen and the record screen, and things can always yeah. come a little bit. So I'm just oh, here dude, trying to. It was so helpful, though, man. I, I mean, there was like a lot of people who hit me up just like wanting to know how to, you know, get through the end of this whole process and everything, and uh, it's it's great. And and I'm gonna definitely need to refer to it but it's also straightforward enough that i know i can handle it like after all this so this is this is incredible well, it's recorded so you can you can go back yeah no i know i'm, I'm this is nice part about it I'm very thankful hey so let I'm, me know I'm, so i was just gonna say let me know what world you go into and i'll meet you with the character from csm that i just followed through awesome. and created. Oh, beautiful i love it uh so here i've just dragged a character in uh, github in my repository and i'm just gonna commit those changes and it's going to bring me the character processing files. And it's called Grems. Do, 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 do. All these broken VRMs. <laughs> so my troubleshooting. Um, AB, there we go. I'm going to take that. I'm going to copy that and add it to my nomenclature, which is kind of like this. Um, I think memory had like a really cool little uh, gadget uh, that you can use, but I've, I've got my own setup. Uh, basically, just a big file list. I can just stick stuff in. So I'm going to stick that in there. And which world should we go in? Yours. Any preferences? Um, I don't know. Something simple. Spaces. See more. Um, Someone choose. Now, there you go. Go to my space right there. Radius. 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 Cool. Awesome. Enter space. Does it have sound? It does have some sound. Okay, I need to turn it off. Otherwise, you're going to hear like really loud sound over me talking and recording. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Let me jump in. What am I doing? Once we get in there. In the meantime, I'm just going to like uh, paste it in chat, the VRM. So everyone grab their VRM and let's jump into the world. Uh, and I'm gonna paste the link to the world. I'm not gonna make like a friend thing because Mona has this new thing. You can just jump into the world whenever. And we'll all be in the same world. Um, so let me just move it. So, oh. Uh, what's the link to the world oh. that you're in, Augie? Let me just uh, copy paste. So said, we don't need to do a hangout at all. We can just go straight in. And we'll be in the same world. This is like a new edition that Mona did. I'll just put it in the chat. So it's just Monaverse Radius, uh, Pixel Hustle's world. And okay, I got to make my see. character bigger. But yo, but this is cool as shit. Moment of truth. Oh, there you are. Wow. There's that so, little dude I shared earlier. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> Love it. He's like Ant-Man something. Yeah. Let me, <laughs> let me get a, a grand zoom. Hang on, I'm on my way. And... Oh, no. This is the, by the way, this is a giveaway for the next VRM power. Shameless plug. Uh, well, give it away. Nice. So, you know, you may want to attend the next one. We're going to be going through like uh, a massive monitor switch stuff. And it's going to be super fun. Um, probably featuring 40 VRMs. Because, you know, why not? Nice. Woohoo! Nice. Oh my god, this is so cool. <laughs> yes. We need to be able to jump oh, higher. Oh dude, you know, I mean seriously. Just hands out as well. <laughs> there's so many people that just will not care about the little flaws. Like you don't even see them at this point. Nobody cares. No, oh, look at the hands. Oh, it's so great. Oh, we, we can make it like if you walk bam, it's a high five with a head. <laughs> Oh, wait, I didn't even look at that. Let me see what those arms on your heads are doing. Yay! Nice! Oh, that's so got cool. Yeah, like a grab oh, basically, that's... Chat. So I'm that's stick basically... Chat in the chat here. So I've just stuck it in the chat in a space. So just got that, and that'll give you a VRM as well for the person who just jumped in. <laughs> but yeah, so we got like these. Yo, I like us being little dudes over here. <laughs> yeah, man. It's just, uh, <laughs> not for these big dudes. We're going to be small yeah. dudes now. Woo! We're be jumping around. So 
yeah like uh, it's like it's like an avocado gremlin oh yo check this out since we're here let me show you something real quick so when you i had like, built... stop wrong you can see like the, the hands are moving so if you go forward go back wait what like do that you can see like if you turn yeah, around that worked out so good wait so when he raised it when rizzle raised his head hands up in the air it cut through the mesh if you is there a way to avoid that uh yeah um not a good one not the one we can do in mona the way to avoid <laughs> it would be to be Gliders. able to create your own animated um right, 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 things right, per right. character because you are done generically some characters have a big head and like for example i just did like that finger it's gonna go through my head because i got Dude, a big head they got it they got a, there's a head spin in there now yeah, yeah. it's one of the community <laughs> ones there's a bunch of like cool community ones. That's cool, man. Oh, what? Oh, nice. <laughs> Yo, check this out. So I actually, when I minted this space, I had had another environment in here that I was going to create whatever that you were going to teleport to. But I decided <laughs> not to, but I forgot to remove the portals. So like if you, right. run, if you run down here and then jump at the very end here. Where are you? Where are you? We need to follow you, just right? Just go straight towards, run towards the heart and just jump when you're in the middle of it. Oh, right. Okay, cool. Oh. Oh, no, I'm just, I'm just, oh, I'm so, what, where the hell? I'm somewhere oh, else. Yeah. yeah, we're actually way up above the world. Like, if you jump off, you'll oh. see it when you go down. So this is kind of like the secret meeting place now since I accidentally left this portal in here. I love it. I love the fact yeah. that you have to jump into the nothingness as well. There's no kind of specific point. It's just like, yeah, you just gonna jump, you should trust it. Right. And it totally and it actually resets when you're jumping down. It's actually resetting and dropping you back in the world, but it makes it seem like you just fell and landed on like, it. These guys are so cool. Like such a right. good job yeah, on dude, designing this is result. great, dude. This they is work, actually they look great. Yeah, these are really inspiring. This is I like mean... what I was thinking about, like these kind of weird meta gremlins that kind of kind of inhibit the meta so and be mischievous and Kind of right. make all our technology not quite work the way it should do in the digital realm i mean yes. dude, we just empowered you know anybody to be able to come up with a cool ass character of their own like that's just fantastic and again Crazy. like i'm i'm really pleasantly surprised that when it comes into being in the world because of the fun factor of it all Nobody cares about the little flaws. Like, my hands are all fused together. They're absolutely horrible. My fingers aren't even separate. But... <laughs> but small, I can't see it. It's so fun. It's part of it. But who cares? It's great. Um, and we can fix yeah. that. You know, we could take that, we could take that T-pose image and we can refine the yeah. fingers better so it's more predominant and it gives the mesh more to play with. But this is good stuff, man. Thank you. Yes, yeah, oh, absolutely. Pleasure. This and, you know, this is for... Oh, no, I fell off. Getting too excited. And this is for the people who are like, um, you know, not everyone can sculpt in VR or like make sculpting mesh and stuff like that. It's like a full new skill set. And, you know, yeah. anyone can like input, you know, and even if people don't know how to like use AI, you can take a photo of something and input that in. Yeah. Do a, a dirty and cleanup and, and that you know, is good enough. Put it in white sentence. Yeah. That, that'll do. And, put it in white paper and, and take a photo. And honestly, for me, it's like, with some of the characters, the avatars I'm trying to create, it's like I could model them. I love modeling. I do all my modeling in VR and whatever. But to be able to actually have a base model that's kind of what close to what I'm looking like for. Yeah. Power. yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just wanted to be able to make something usable. And I feel like once I got to that point, then I can start like tinkering around with like the, the things to really refine it. But I'm like... This is actually like achievable and obtainable for me. And uh, dude, Augie, man, these came out incredible. They did. Uh, sorry about the earlier. Yeah. I, I think that's like my blender thing. Um, but you know, these things. Oh, happen. dude, you've got a nice computer. I'm on my low end gaming laptop. I usually use this one so I have more of a real perspective of what everybody's experience is. But looking at it in your screenshot on your apparently really awesome computer and all the blur and everything you got going on, it looks so good. Yeah. Uh, this is my old rig, uh, so this is my Metaverse rig. Uh, yeah, 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 but, oh, good. but the screen is calibrated properly. So it, it's the screen is actually one of those like fairly oldish uh, graphic design screens. It weighs a ton, and it's like properly calibrated with color and everything else. So that's why things are working better. So even though it's like 1080 Ti on this baby, and only like 64 RAM, it's not much. 
Um, it's all, I built it all uh, with a friend. So it all kind of works together really well. So I'm getting much more, I mean, everything's overclocked, but I'm getting like much more performance than something else. But my, my main rig now, it's, uh, that, that's a beast. <laughs> that's a beast, but I've also overclocked it. But that's a beast that kind of runs super, super hard, super fast um, for my trillion of polys work, really. Um, but I always kind of like do all the metaverse stuff in here because, you know, other people don't have huge computers and I want to see where it's going to break. Um, so having some kind of legacy hardware exactly. means that it breaks as much as often. Yeah. And then I'll yeah, and honest, like a laptop honestly, and an iPad we've, and stuff like that. And honestly, we've all gotten really excited about a lot of the worlds and everything we've been in, but for the general audience, <laughs> they're not even able to enjoy it. Honestly, even my low end gaming laptop kind of struggles a little bit. It does well, but anyway, yeah, this yeah. is awesome, dude. I'm really, it was just sort of proof of concept. We've been heading down this road for a minute and it's just a yes. great proof of concept, man. It really, really is, man. Uh, please share the link to the video once uh, once you're done recording and everything, man. Because I, I would like to give myself some homework from this because I have like two or three other ones that I have queued up like right up until the point where you basically picked up this workshop and everything. And I, I'm pretty confident I can get uh them moving so i i'd like to take a stab at it with a with a fresh one and and report back yeah cool 100 percent. well while we're here i'll just i'll just run this quickly just to see what show you the potentials of stuff so you can see the vrms in motion um so i'm gonna put like different vrms through here so this is a patos so scale i like the scale these guys are so small but you know he's kind of shiny and everything else for some reason like ai likes doing in big bucks <laughs> wait, wait, wait like, is that... AI gave saying... my like little uh, Martian a big butt and a thong, but I kind of like yeah, yeah, yeah. It does wait, weird on... things. Are you saying that 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 CSM? That's a CSM yeah, yeah. model right there. I'm gonna just show you like a bunch of them, which are all CSM. Wait, how did you get it? It's so like in your style. I mean, that wasn't just I, journey. Is I that took, you uh... rendering something? No, no, I took one of my things and put it in there. So I just took one of my characters and put it in. Same with this guy. Mm -hmm. Wait, meaning you so put just, a 2D, 2D like image a heart to the back of it. <laughs> you put a 2D image of, of it in a T pose into CSM yeah. of your actual yeah. avatar character. That is incredible. Yeah. And I got this. Whoa. So those yeah, are I'm like sorry, I'm sorry if I cut you guys off and stuff. My my mic and headset keeps going in and out. I'm not trying to interrupt. No worries. I apologize. And then no. this is like a claymation one. This is like a smaller dude. So this is like I made it out of clay. And I haven't done like clay stuff for ages. So I, I spent like a whole weekend sculpting clay and I had to like basically heat it up in the sun. So my hands were like really aching. I'm like, oh my God, clay is really hard. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's a little clay bot effectively. So that's it kind of gave me like these weird googly eyes. Didn't have those. But uh, yeah, it kind, of, it kind of worked. It's like, woo, which is kind of like nice. And then the next one is this is like a made in vector illustration, just made in. AI, the original Adobe Illustrator, <laughs> as opposed to any Yeah, I got to try to do a hand-drawn one. A total side note, I'm really excited. I actually just threw in a bunch of my own art, illustrations, paintings, and everything. <laughs> and right. I'm, training an, like I'm, training, I'm training an AI model. So then I'll be able to create an avatar based on an AI model of my paintings and drawings and <laughs> stuff. Yeah, oh, sweet. Break. Break. That's That's great. 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 My mind is like exploding with like all the possibilities. I know. Mine, mine too right now. <laughs> and then if, um, if if you've got like any action figures, you go to like charity shops and all that. You can pick like a bunch of them for like no almost no money, or like what we call here a car boot sale, and you just take photos of them. You got like it's like yeah, dude. That that was something that never occurred to me. Like that you mentioned <laughs> right off the beginning. I'm like, oh my god, man, what a great idea! Just the different things you can plug into it. Um, yo, I, yeah, I'm yeah, gonna yeah. have to jump, man. But I like really, really, really appreciate this like walkthrough and helping rig this thing, and it it just looks incredible, man. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do some homework and uh, see if I can follow this tutorial and report back with some oddities. Yeah, dude. Oh yeah. man, happy days.